Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, I wanted to give you guys a guide for Dragon's B10. Mainly my team and how I use it for Dragon's B10. I really can't say anything about all the other Dragon floors because I basically skipped through all those floors. I used the same team that I'm, I was using for Dragon's B10 for a long time. And I basically nuked through all the floors and if I died I just kept reviving until I passed it and made it all the way to B10 and started farming B10. So that's a, that's kind of just the strategy I went with. I can't really tell you guys about you know alternative strategies. This is just mainly my strategy. There's obviously a lot of ways to farm dragons B10. I've heard of people that can actually heal and tank through the dragon. Um, that has good and bad sides. Like obviously um, if you can pull it off your team is actually really stable. You can actually 100% clear dragon. But I think my team comes pretty close. If things do go right, I will be able to kill the dragon um, without having to refill or revive. And, you know, if I had better gems on my units, like this team works really well, but if I had like perfect gems on these units, then I can definitely get like very, very close to 100% uh, with this team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off my gems. Um, this is my Dark Nike. She has attack, crit rate, and HP on 100% crit. That's kind of the main thing that you need her with. Everything else is just a bonus. It doesn't really matter that much. My Gatito also has 100% crit rate. In order to push 100%, I kind of have to use a broken set. This one is attack, crit damage, and crit rate. So it's, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty, pretty decent. This is my Light Medusa um, on a Ruin set. 100% crit rate as well, with uh, crit rate, attack, and crit damage. And she also she has, actually has really really high crit damage using this set. She has a decent amount of attack and 100% crit rate, of course. Last unit is my Dark Thor, who is on defense, attack, and crit rate. And he has near 100%, 99%. It's actually high enough. And mainly just focus on like some defensive stats as well as um, attack stats. Mo mostly, mostly on crit rate. I, I can't even talk right now. Mostly on crit rate. Now we're going to just go into Dragon's B10 and I'll go through my strategy like in detail because I think I, I think in a lot of my videos I mainly just run through it. I don't really explain why I do certain things and why gem units a certain way. And then um, I'm going to be going through all the if, like, if this happens, then, then, then you do what, you know, scenarios here. So we're just going to put in this team. I think I've started, I've started to get a little bit superstitious. I think if I put the Victoria here first and then put my Gatito on the last slot, um, units are less likely to hit my Dark Gatito. But it's probably just pure superstition. Oh shit, better turn off that auto. That was a little bit dangerous. Now, this is the first turn. What I do in the first turn is there's two there's always gonna be one light Persephone in the middle and two side units. All these units are level 100 and they're all light type. Now, the thing with light units is light units all have a base of 0% resistance. And these units, these small units on the side, they actually have no resistance at, at all. And that is why I use armor break um, and CC against this, this stage. And that's why it's so effective against this stage. Now, this Persephone is a different story. She actually has, I would say, over 50% resistance. It's actually pretty high. And she has a pretty high chance to resist your your attack. Now, a lot of Dragon's B10 farming, um, at least for my team, is RNG. As you can see, I'm using a full, basically a full nuker slash CC slash utility comp. No heals at all. What I usually do on the first turn is I armor break one unit with my Thor, and then I kill it with my Dark Atito. Now, what you can, the reason why I do this is it leaves two units alive. Basically, after these two go, there's only two units that are out. And what I can do now is I can CC one. Since she has a 100% chance to stun, I can always stun this unit. This will happen 100% of the time. Now, everything I've done up to now is guaranteed, is 100% guaranteed to happen. Um, what happens now is not guaranteed. 
I'm going to try to stun this Light Purse with my Dark Victoria. If it does stun, then she's stunned and I'm safe. If it doesn't stun, she's going to attack one of my Dark units. Ooh, that was super close. Ooh, she actually has enough... She actually has enough HP and defense to survive that. Usually when she crits, um, one of my units dies and it's over. Like, I just have to do one extra refill in order to um, get past the dragon. At least one refill. If, if, if on the first turn my Victoria tries to stun her, it doesn't stun and she attacks one of my units and crits, any of my units and crits, then they will die 100% for sure and I will have to use one extra refill in order to beat the dragon. But if she attacks one of my units and doesn't crit, then um, it will be I'll be in this situation right now. Now obviously she crit just now, but it just happened to not do as much enough damage to kill my Dark Victoria, so I'm still somewhat safe. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, what I do now is I, I can also... Oh, there's also a third scenario, is if she attacks my Dark Atito, then um, my Dark Atito dies, and then I will have to at least use one more refill, because he, this guy's the only one that's built full glass cannon. So I, if she doesn't get stunned, she has a 1 in 3 chance to hit my Dark Atito. If she hits anyone else, it, they will survive as long as she doesn't crit, and her crit chance isn't really that high. I, I think it's only about 15%. And if she doesn't crit... Um, these two will live and then I'll be in this situation. So second turn, I, I will always armor break this unit with my Thor, finish it off with my Dark Petito, and then I'll ha just have these two attack and try to stun her. Now if she resists both, there's a chance that she maybe um, can hit the Thor or my other unit. If she resists it and hits my Petito, then I will have to refill. Like I just, I have to. There's really just no way for me to clear it without um, without refilling. Alright, she resisted. I'm just going to nuke her. And then she's going to use her AoE nuke and she's going to kill my whole entire team. Which is fine, because I, I kind of want her to do this. So I can uh, use my revive and enter the second stage with a team that has full HP and a slightly filled up SP bar. So I'm just going to send all my units to attack her at once. Do a combo, finish her off generate as much blue soul as I can. Not really all that much because she died from that. But my Gatito did get a little bit of a bar. Now, um, that is the scenario if she actually does die. If she doesn't die, I basically I just try to CC her and, and kill her. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, the second stage, what I do to start off this stage is um, you actually want to see, there's three types of units that can be here. The first stage it actually doesn't matter what units are on the side because I will always kill on first turn with my Thor and Gatito, one unit, and I will always CC the other one. So there's no way that any of the side units will be able to move. So it doesn't matter at all which unit um, I kill first on the first stage, but it does matter on the second stage because I will be leaving one unit un uncc'd and it will hit one of my dark units. So if you, um, there's only three types of units that can appear here, the B, the bat and the the colt, which is the horsey thing. Um, the colt actually has highest threat, it actually has highest attack. Next is the bee, then the bat. The bat has barely any attack. So the bat is actually the the thing that you is more ideal to leave alive. The other good thing is the the colt has shock, the bee has defense down, and the bat only has attack down. So attack down isn't all that threatening either. So um, but it actually doesn't matter. It doesn't matter their, what their debuffs are. Mainly, I'm only um, concerned about their base damage because after the first turn, nobody's going to get a turn. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill one unit, as usual. Basically, armor break. Kill my Gatito. Now, I'm going to stun two units. I'm going to stun with um, stun this one with my, with my Medusa. Stun this one with my Victoria, and I'm going to leave one bat alive. Now it hits me, puts attack down on me, which is perfectly fine, doesn't really matter. Now since this B is pretty low, and he's also squishier than the bat, I'm just going to kill him like this. I'm going to go with my Thor, go in, and then even with a Dark Atito with attack down um, on armor break, he's still dead for sure. So I still have two CC units left over. What I can do is I can stun them both. Now the other thing you want to kind of um, take advantage of here is you want to use as many turns as possible so your other team members can build up their blue souls and have their actives up 
during the boss. So what you can do is you can I can use my Light Medusa who ha doesn't have elemental advantage against this bat and just try to stun him. And then as for the other three, I'll just uh, I'll just go in and nuke it. But it's going to be too much damage. It's going to die for sure, 100%. Oh shit! Oh shit! I fucked up. I fucked up because I uh, <laughs> I accidentally let my Dark Atito use his active. I I used the auto button. I shouldn't have done. I should not have done that. That was my bad. Um, but it's still fine. It's still fine. I just go in nuke. I think he should have his bar up in two turns, so it, it shouldn't matter that much. Yeah, it definitely isn't too bad. Now, for the dragon, what I my strategy for the dragon is actually pretty simple. Um, I have to rely on RNG a little bit here because my gem isn't perfect. If my gems on all my units were perfect, then I wouldn't need to rely on RNG at all, and I would be able to basically kill him for sure as long as he doesn't resist my armor break twice in a row. And this dra dragon actually doesn't even have have as much resistance as the Persephone, so I think the majority of the time you're going to be able to armor break him. Okay, he did resist, but it's it's still perfectly fine. We're just going to go in and um, put as much damage on him as possible. See if I can generate enough blue souls. Okay, this is actually a really bad run, because if my Dark Atito had its active up now, I th and my Light Medusa, I probably would have been able to finish him off. That was actually my mistake, but whatever. Yeah, if he had his active, he would be dead. That was my bad. Kind of messed that up. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Let's see what I get. Come on. It's, uh... It has resist. I mean, I can power it up once, see if it gets me anything, like another good substat, like defense or something. And then I can keep this gem and try to get the get the resist higher. You know, try to get lucky. And then at plus six, if it goes to any of the flat stats, I'll just sell it. All right, we'll do this again. See if I can show some other scenarios where things go a little bit better. So first things first, I always armor break one side unit, as usual. Kill it. Um, the reason why I stunned this one with my Light Medusa is because I won't have enough damage to kill it anyways. And my Dark Valk actually, or Dark Victoria actually has elemental advantage against the purse. So she's actually going to do a little bit more damage. Um, and this is why I choose to stun the purse with my with my Valk and not the other way around. Second turn, that was actually really good. She got stunned, so um, no threat. I don't have to rely on RNG at all there. And then now I'm going to try to stun her again. And um, this is actually really good because she got stunned. Now my Gatito also has a full bar, and this is also really nice because if I do do not land any of my CC or any of my armor break, my Gatito with my active will still be able to kill this purse. Meaning that I don't have to rely on RNG at all here. What I like to do here is I like to armor break it, him. And then I would um, attack with these two and see if she gets stunned. If she gets stunned, I will save my active on my, on my Gatito. Just because I can. Um, there's really no reason for me to use it. Now second stage is still the same. I mainly keep it because just in case that Thor um, has a 1% chance to not crit and doesn't crit. Now, I explained earlier the the way you want to eliminate eliminate your threat on the second stage is Colt highest priority, then bat, or then B, then bat. Bat is lowest lowest threat. So you want to eliminate the highest threat first. I'm going to armor break the Colt, one shot it with my Gatito, and then I'm going to stun the two Bs and leave the bat awake. Okay, it chose to hit my Victoria, which is fine. Do the same thing, kill one of the bees, since it does technically have higher threat. And it's also low, so I'm going to kill it for sure. But even if I, I hit this bat, I would still kill it for sure. So um, do the same exact thing. Stun them both. Now, over here, it doesn't matter who I stun with, because all my units basically already have full bars. 
So all I really, all I really need to do is CC one of them, and then send all, all my other units to attack. And then right now I'm trying to generate as much red soul as possible so I can heal back to full. Do the same thing. Have all four units attack. And then, alright, that was unfortunate that no red soul went to her. But it's still fine. Now I'm going to try to armor break this dragon. And then we're all going to use our first skill on the dragon and hope that he doesn't hit my Gatito. If he hits anybody besides my Gatito, then I can basically one-shot him. Um, my gems, if they were more perfect on my Thor and Victoria, I could make it so that even if he were to hit my Gatito, the other three with their actives would still be able to kill him. But my gems aren't at that level yet, so um, they basically need to be all full ruin, 100% crit rate in order to, for me to achieve that. So now with these three with their actives up, I'm just going to hit tap this auto button and do a full nuke on his face. And that's a perfect run. Let's see if I get anything good. Ooh, it's a pugilist. It's a shitty recovery pugilist. Alright, whatever. See if I can show another scenario where something different happens. I think I've shown every single scenario to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward at this point. Basically, I stun this one. Um, I stun this with Purse. Let's try to stun this with Victoria. Okay, that's pretty lucky. Okay, I finished killing this, and then I'm going to send these two to try to stun her. This lands, then I'm, I'm, I'm actually really, really good. Okay, this doesn't land. I'm going to try to CC her. If she gets CC'd, then I, I basically don't have to use my active. Because I can, I can always use it again if the armor break or CC doesn't land the second turn. Now, I know since the armor break landed, I know she's going to die for sure, so I just send everyone to attack her. And now everyone has a full bar. There is another way you can clear the second stage faster if you're super lazy. You can nuke with the Dark Victoria first, nuke with these two, and then just hit someone with her Gatito and hope that their bars charge up, all charge up to full. Which actually is pretty likely. So I can actually show you guys once if this does happen. If you're just feeling super lazy. Alright, it didn't charge up to full, but it doesn't actually matter. Because um, after the first turn, I'm probably still going to be full bar with these two anyways. I think the other thing that doesn't matter, well, that m might matter a little bit is um, I kind of want my Dark Victoria to have a full bar. Just kind of as a fail save for her second skill. Because if my Thor doesn't land the armor break, she actually has a ch chance to land it. Um, and then th these two can actually do more damage to bring the dragon to around 60% health still. So... I'm going to try to land the armor break, and if it doesn't land, then I'll just feel like an idiot. Okay, send these three to attack. Okay, he didn't hit my Dark Gatito, which means I can do a full nuke and kill him, and that's a perfect run. The dragon is pretty low resistance. He actually doesn't resist too much. He does resist sometimes, but not, not too much. It shouldn't be too hard to um, try to CC. Please, something good. I might actually keep this because I can use it to fill another set. Like, if I'm missing just one triangle and I have, like, two other good gems I can use for siphoning, then I might just, like, throw this in just to, just to complete the set, you know? Alright, we'll just do one more run for the, the hell of it because might as well. Um, but I think at this point you kind of understand the strategy that I explained. Now, I think there's a few replacement units, but there's not that many that can be used to replace some of these. Um, one of them is the Fire Arthur, but he basically has to be Evil 3 to have better stats than the Light Siren, or the Light... Uh, Medusa. 
And there's the... There's the Wood Yaksha. I'm still trying to get her to evil 3 right now. If I have a Wood Yaksha, I might actually use um, the Wood Yaksha as a leader instead of instead of the other two. And then I think with the Wood Yaksha, I might be able to, and Light Medusa, I might be able to kill the, the dragon even without my Dark Atitos um, active. And then I can try to gem my Dark Atito with like one slot HP so he can survive one hit from the purse if he does if he were to get hit. Alright, I'm gonna stun this purse. Okay, I was lucky enough for the stun to land. My Gatito has a full bar. So, um, yeah, this she's dead for sure. Alright, since uh, the stun landed, I don't think it even matters. I could have just uh, sent all three and they would be dead for sure. Now, since I have a full bar, don't have a full bar on everyone, I won't be able to nuke. Same thing again, kill the cult first. One, because they're squishiest. Um, two because they have highest damage. So I've one shot that one. Stun the Colt, stun the bat, and leave, or stun the bee and leave the bat alive. Or leave the bat awake. Do the same thing. Kill the most threatening unit first. And then stun the other two. Like this. And then they can't move. Do the same thing. Um, oh crap, I kind of fucked that one up. But I think my Victoria should be able to get a full bar. Yeah, I, I could have gotten one more turn to hit him again. And then possibly generate some souls for my... Blue souls for my Victoria. But that would only matter if this stun doesn't land. Okay, nice. It did. Do this again. See, hope he doesn't hit my Gatito. Please, anyone besides my Gatito? Alright, my Gatito's dead. Now, this is the situation I was explaining before. If I had Ruin on all three of them, um, then this, with their actives up, I should be able to one-shot this dragon. As you can see, I'm short a little bit of damage. So I wasn't able to do that. And then they die from the AoE. But it's fine, it's just one refill. If I hadn't had a perfect, or if I have a perfect set on all of them, then I wouldn't have to rely on this, uh, on, my, on the dragon to not hit my Gatito. Because even if he were to hit my Gatito, I would still kill him. All right, I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. I, I'm feeling kind of addicted. Like I feel like, I feel like I can get some decent gem or something. Oh no, I fucked that up. I was supposed to st it was supposed to be the other way around. Shit. Alright, it's fine. Alright, see if these two can- at least one of them can stun. Okay, perfect. Marketito has his bar up now. So even if she resists everything here, he's still gonna kill him. I don't know why, I might be superstitious, but I feel like the Dark Victoria has a higher chance to stun against the, um, against that purse. Okay, this is literally the last run, I'll just, uh, end my video after this one. Wonder if Elemental Advantage has anything to do with resistance. It almost feels like it does. But it doesn't s sound like it makes sense, you know? Uh, let's try to buy one more turn so I can generate a little bit more red and blue souls. So these two can heal up to full. Okay, everyone has a full bar besides Thor, which is fine. Because he's going to need to use his first skill anyways. Nice, it got resisted. Now this is the thing I was talking about. If it does get resisted, what I can do with my Dark Victoria is try to use her second skill. And then if it gets resisted too, then I'm just fucked, basically. 
Uh, I don't think I have enough damage to one-shot the dragon with this. See if I can. Oh, it's a little bit close. If if my Katito was on a Ruin set or a Valor set or anything like that, it would have been an, enough damage. That is a little bit unfortunate that he resisted that. See, this is why I need everyone on, on Ruin, because if he were to resist on the first turn, I would still have one more chance on the second turn to armor break and one-shot him. Um, but if he... If that if I don't have ruin on all my units, I can't do that. So I basically just need better gems on everyone. All right. Anyways, um, that is pretty much it for my weekend dragon runs and kind of just a short guide video on how to do dragons. Hopefully this helped you guys out. And yeah, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.